You're listening to a Skewed Orbit original podcast. And it's astrologer. Oh, great. Yes. Here we go. I don't care, but but it's like a thing. It's like a thing in the industry. Astrologist. But oh, so it's like an Versus uh, astrologer. Yeah, they don't like us because I use was using astrologist for a while because I and then I was like, oh, I, I I realized I was like, oh, people like astrologer because the ones who've been doing this for a longer time, they're like, oh, astrologist is like not a not a good title. Oh, interesting. In That's terms like, of like people are like like a charlatan will call themselves. I think it's old. I'm just like, it's people, uh, it's like meteorologist, like, a, like, you know, like it's, it's just. Yeah. Florist. Like I was just, yeah, I thought, okay, interesting. Well, yeah. that's like with, um, uh, improviser and, um, cause, with comedy. Right. And so I was like an improviser and people would be like, oh, oh, so you, you, you're an improver. And I'm like, oh, ow, that hurts. No, it's improviser. <laughs> it's improviser. Um, just so much just like yeah. comedy hierarchy. Okay, friends. You've heard it. We've already started. We've started. We're going to keep in those hot gems, those hot, hot gems. Friends, we are recording live during a Mercury retrograde. If you can believe that, we're so daring. We take such risks. Today, this episode coming in hot, a day, uh, literally the day before we kind of close out this eclipse season. So that's really what we're going to be focusing on. This whole episode is talking about all of the things that are happening in the stars and the cosmos, what that means for us, uh, and maybe even a little bit about how we're doing personally. That's right. If you're listening going, who is this? Uh, this is uh, Rachel LaForce, and this is my show. So please welcome to the Rachel LaForce Show. This is a spiritual podcast for me, a longtime comedian for you, and perhaps you're not super spiritual. Maybe you're just getting started on your journey, uh, or perhaps you have been uh, trudging along in this healing work for many, many moons, and this is just a fun place to come and kick back and not take yourself so seriously. Either way, I am so humbled and stoked that you're here, and you are in for quite a treat. Today, we have uh, one of my favorite people to learn from. So please go follow her in all of the spaces and all of the places. Uh, this is career astrologer, Alice Who. Please welcome Alice to the podcast. It's so wonderful <laughs> to be back during Mercury retrograde eclipse season. We are still going to be feeling this energy for the next few weeks. So it doesn't really end on Friday. Super sorry about that. But I really feel like this full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio, it sounds intense if you know a little bit about astrology. You know, it's like a, a full moon, it's an eclipse, and it's Scorpio. But honestly, I feel like it's such a big celebration for so many of us who've been on this healing journey and healing work. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And that's – okay, because that's how I feel – with a lot of, at least the people, so I've been on this journey for five years and I mm. have very much felt like this is closing out. I'm like, okay, we're done. Like with the narrative that I have been sharing for like five years of like, oh, this is my journey and this is how I've gotten here. Like for me, this really feels like book closed. We're done. We're moving on. And then I thought maybe that was just like my own cycles of where I'm at. And then so many healers and people that I'm like friends yes. with and, you know, commune with on socials and things like that. And they're like, oh yeah, no, I feel the same thing. Like huge yes. ending for whatever it is for them. And then kind of this brand new beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a lot of people are feeling the end of a cycle because yes, it is an end of a cycle specifically, um, you know, with these eclipses is the end of like a two, two and a half year cycle. We're closing these chapters this year and starting a new one and really stepping into our power, releasing old money stories, like the feeling of instability, of not being enough, feeling powerless, like all these different themes, right? And really starting to build more momentum and moving forward, stepping into Aries energy. This is going to be very potent for those who have their 
sun, moon, rising, or north node in Aries, uh, and really just activating a strong sense of self and exploring a sense of self. And this is why I love astrology, because I think it's a powerful tool to understand yourself. And to understand yourself is to move forward in exploring your purpose and your career and or business that you're meant to be sharing with the world. And that's why I like to share astrology from the lens of career. I'm also um, not a Capricorn, but have a lot of Capricorn placements. And it's a sign of career, of hard work and kind mm-hmm. of like, just like doing, 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 doing. Yes. I feel like I've been doing a lot of doing, doing, doing. And I don't I feel like I'm in this this is just a thing about me. I feel like trying to find the balance between what is overworking, like what is not having a balance when it comes to like career. Mm-hmm. But I, I feel like so much of what I do is actually just me being me. Like I feel like even doing this podcast and being able to like hang out with you. Like for me, this is more of like, oh, I get to like catch up with a friend and hear like their perspective of what's going on in the world and like what all of this, you know, chaos and creating alignment within, you know, um, what's going on with astrology, how that's affecting her. And it like makes me not feel so alone and kind of helps like put things in perspective for me too. Um, And yeah, I've just noticed that I was t- I was chatting with a friend last night and he was like, well, you know, Rachel, like everything doesn't have to be about work. Like I really encourage you to <laughs> but do. Doesn't it? Yeah. And, <laughs> and and like I had a very visceral reaction to him saying that. And then I was like, well, no, I respect that. Like I, you know, that he was like, hey, find some balance. Like I appreciate that. And I was also realizing though, I was like, but so much of what I do is just about being able to express myself. Does that make sense? Yes, this does make a lot of sense because uh, like I told you, I pulled up your information (laughs) and we could do a mini reading later. Uh, So I think last time I was on the show, I talked about this website that I was making, yoursaturn.com, my career astrology astrology website. This has taken the life out of me, (laughs) but in a good way, Uh, lots of learnings, lots of um, investment, exploring, you know, the themes of Taurus and Scorpio of trusting myself, doing more healing work, um, revisiting, rewiring my money mindset. And it launched two months ago and I'm slowly working through the kinks, kind of figuring out like what works, what doesn't work and the reception of it. And I'll send you your report. uh, I'll text it to you after it's just been really wonderful. It's, yeah, just, it's a beautiful thing because you know who I am and I share astrology and other spiritual concepts in a very grounded way, very much so like you. And so when you get this report, it's a couple paragraphs, just like who you are. It's like kind of like you opening the book and they're like, who is (laughs) Rachel? Who is Alice? And I wrote it in just very colloquial terms. Like if we were talking, like Rachel is this type of person. She needs this to feel well-rested. She likes to connect with these types of people. She faces these types of challenges in her life. These are some jobs that will be a good fit. And these are some jobs that are too easy and she should not be pursuing as strongly. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I I like that of like, what are things that are too easy? That's an interesting concept. Um, yeah. Okay. So it launched two months ago. Yeah. Cause you, so you've been working on this for two two years. No, that's almost no, no. Okay. I think, yeah. Yeah. It's also like, Oh my God, we talked about this last time, how like readings kind of happen like during, (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> you know the interview because you know we both have gone through the training and it just flows in and out like through the work that we do. And I remember we were talking about like colors, and you're like, "Have you been feeling like like I see this color around you, this color with your website?" And I'm like, "Yes, these are the colors that I am really vibing yes. with." <laughs> There's like flowers. I have some poppies that are like the same color, like hanging out on the side, this orange, this red kind of like fiery sun color. Uh, And this idea came to me in the fall of 2021. And I was just like, Rachel, I was like, man, 
I don't have time for this. I don't, this is another like business. I'm like, I can't do all these things. But my intuition was like, you should do this. And I know that my intuition won't lead me astray. It took me about another six months to kind of hop on uh, and really be serious about it because one of my close friends had a near death experience mm. and I just, and I was there for it. And I was like, I'm not messing around. I need to get my act together. Mm. <laughs> you know, we got one life to live. It's a beautiful reminder. And I'm like, I, I ha- what do I really want to do in 2022? What do I really want? And of course, you know, I flopped back and forth, trusting myself, not trusting myself. But at the end of the day, it got done. Yep. <laughs> it got Good done. for you. Yeah, it's so true. Like, I... I think actually birthing my sons has like Mm. lit that fire for me because I see Mm. how fast they grow. And so, because, and what I mean by that is like, you actually see that time passes. I think sometimes it's really easy for us to be like, I don't know, I have more time or like, Oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Or, Oh, Mm -hmm. so similar to you where I'm like, Oh no, motherfuckers. Like we don't have nearly as much time as we think we do. So like, it's time to like light some flames and like, we got to go. And yeah, I, and it, it, if I'm hearing you correctly too, it's like there mm-hmm. that when we're doing the work that feel, and I don't, I also like to say for people listening, I don't feel like your job or your career has to be your purpose. I think people's purpose can come in many different yes. forms. Um, yes. And so I just always like to say that, but I, I feel like specifically in this iteration of like what you and I are sharing, it is very much that. So I don't think that everybody has to have their career is like their purpose. And I think we can also have like multiple purposey and of they, course. Yeah, yeah. But purposes, pur- yes. purposes, purposei. <laughs> it's purposei, sure. Uh, purposes. Yeah. But that's how I felt when I was chatting with my friend where I feel like, uh, and I'm like, this is not the time to like get into the whole thing and me being like, yeah, but I work a lot because like, it's my purpose and it's how I express myself and like all of those things. But I certainly know, like, even like this last week I was like, Oh, if stuff doesn't get out on time, it's just not going to get out on time. Like I need to recalibrate. I need to rest. So I'm aware of when I need to put me first, you know, like the world can wait. They'll be fine. You know, no one's like chomping at the bit for the next Rachel LaForce thing. But, um, yeah, certainly I, (laughs) I, I feel that where it's like, yeah, it's, it's like, for me now of what I do, it's not work. It's just who I am. And I think I spent so long not knowing who the fuck I was that now going back to that idea of like when you were sharing your uh, friend had this near death experience that you were there and you're like, oh, time is of the essence. Like we got to go. It's like, I feel that way now where I'm like, oh no, like we got it. It's time. It is time. (laughs) <laughs> and, you know, I believe that, you know, people come come through like purpose and career, you know, in, in different ways. Some people, mm-hmm. before they have a spiritual awakening, they know that their career and purpose is different. Sometimes it's like after and sometimes it never changes and it really just depends on yourself. And mm-hmm. I am someone who... Uh, just really strongly relates to that in this specific moment that what I do in like nine to five is very important as I pursue my purpose. But with that, I think something t- I, I, I really want to share and I haven't shared too too much of, and especially in this, this particular season that will really extend, I think, throughout the rest of the year and maybe even like the next year or two, because we are closing these lessons around um, financial stability and financial boundaries and remaking our money stories. And, you know, for so long, I've done this full, 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 full time. But my nervous system was getting really like just all going haywire after making like Saturn and putting in all this work and realizing like, wait, this is the beginning. (laughs) This is actually the beginning. This is not kind of like, oh, now it's just going to do the thing it's going to do. And I was like, I just need a reset. So um, this last month, you know, one of the reasons why I'm feeling really busy is because I decided to take a freelance marketing role. Mm. And it was something that my ego had a difficult time grappling. But as this full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio is coming up, I'm like, it all makes sense because I am releasing the unhealthy, like 
money mindsets, money like thinking patterns, and I've welcomed more abundance into my life. Mm -hmm. It's all been really good for like my nervous system, like how I feel and just like balancing and just doing more because in my mind, I'm like, as my business becomes more successful, like Alice, you don't think you're going to get this busy, but more Mm -hmm. with this part-time role that you've taken. And I'm like, this is about balancing. It's about like figuring it out. And it's a hard thing, but I I really do feel like more and more people, especially if you've been doing this for a long time and you're feeling a call to change your offerings and services and not feeling enough energy to do what you you are doing and need a pause. So many people are feeling this way, wanting to do something different and new. And sometimes it can be very difficult to deliver what you've been delivering and you just need a break and to go back to do something that you did before or another skill that you have, but you don't feel as passionate about it's okay. And I needed that permission. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that because I know there's so many people who need that. And I think, yeah, sometimes it's just doing the thing that makes sense. You know, like I, I, I was in a session with somebody yesterday and, uh, she's like just getting the big vision of what like her next big, you know, her, her next big journey is, And she's like, you know, but I still have to like, you know, bills have to get paid and this and that. And I was like, well, we create two stories for you. You know, we create two maps of one, which is like, this is what ultimately we're going to make. And then also like, what do we have to do in the meantime to get there safely so that bills get paid, things make sense. You can save money as you go. You can have money from this to be able to invest in this. Like they're going to have to coexist. And, you know, and and so I think sometimes it's like we, as dreamers, as passionate people, we do that of, and I'm not projecting any of this onto you, just my experience where it's like, um, no, but it has to be this one thing. And like, that's what I'm really working on is like flexibility yeah. of like, I have no idea how this is going to work. Go ahead. I am not a flexible person. I have, people know this about me. I'm working on flexibility. My North Node in Pisces is much more flowy. My South Node is in Virgo, rigid as fuck. Like, like strict timetables. Like we're running on like a Japanese train schedule. We're on time. We're actually early. And, you know, someone who's really taught me to kind of be just more flowy, but also kind of meeting me halfway now is my boyfriend, Mm. you know, he's been like, you know, why do you have to like, think this way? Like you're, you know, like just like small things too. I'm like, okay, I was going to do this for dinner. I'm going to do this. And he's like, you know, it seems like you've been, you're you're having a really busy day. Like, why don't I just pick up something? Like, you don't need to make this. And I'm like, well, this was on the schedule in my mind. This is what I was going to be doing, but it's really unhealthy to be thinking in that way. And I see how that rigidity has been to my detriment. And I, and, and I finally feel it in a very, I've been feeling it these last few weeks, you know, during eclipse season, but I've really been feeling it this week as we have this full moon in Scorpio coming up just right around the corner. I'm like, you know, I just, because Scorpio energy is very controlling and this is a big part of my personality. Um, but only one part of my personality that doesn't need to come out all the time. Yep. I think, I mean, I guess a lot of people would be it, that I'm learning to incorporate my shadow is what a yes. lot of people would say. Um, yes. But it's very true where like I'm very controlling of um, my husband where I'm like, you know, we work together and I'm like, well, mm. why would you do it that way? Well, let's do it this way. And it was a while ago where I finally heard myself and not in a way that's like super belittling or anything like that, but it's enough where it's like, we don't need it. Like, Hey, I know he probably doesn't appreciate it. And also, you know, when we work together, it's like that I'm not endowing him to find his own voice to find, you know, like, I'm like, I'm actually, as far as like the, the collaborative creative relationship we have, it's like, you don't want to be with a creative partner who's really wanting to lead, right? It's like that improv exercise of the mirror where it's like, we're supposed to be doing it at the same time. Like we don't know who's moving first, right? It's very classic acting exercise. And I feel like it's great. And I feel like partnerships should really, in a lot of ways, work that way where it's like, it's truly working together. And I think in, in allowing and trusting my husband and being like, you're going to crush it. Like I'm here if you need me, you know, like whatever. And like, it's also that same trust. I think, um, it's mirrored the way that I work with the universe where it's like, no, 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 no. 
true co-creation is participating is showing up, but not micromanaging. I don't, I don't get to micromanage my partner. I don't get to micromanage the universe. Allow yourself to be surprised, allow room for miracles. And so that's been a huge thing for me of like releasing control. Cause also most of the time the things I'm controlling are the things I just don't like about myself. Right. Like if you really think about it, I'm like, Oh, I'm more coming down on you. Cause if I really think about it, it's probably things that I do that I don't like. Uncomfortable. Yes. yes. Very uncomfortable. And I think, you know, what I'm also hearing and very much so releasing control is to allow yourself to receive you allow others to help you. You allow spontaneity, creativity, opportunity, synchronicity to come your way. Yep. And again, it's that what I went, what I said earlier of like, it's also just like the easy thing. It's so much easier. Like I've noticed the amount of energy that I give to every single thing and needing to be like what I identify as like perfect. But if it doesn't go out that way, then people aren't going to receive it. And then they're, you know, and it's like, that's talk about old versions of myself. It's like, first of all, mm. perfection isn't real. And it's really just another form of resistance, which is just another form of procrastination. So if I have to make it perfect, then it never goes out. And if it never goes out, that's why it didn't work out. Oh, that's just the worst. And that's why with Saturn, I was like, it's time. I lo- I can't remember when. It was like a new moon in Aquarius or Pisces. And one had passed, one had come. And I'm like, I got to do this. It's now or never. We got to take it out of the sandbox. We got to test it. And then, yes, it broke down multiple times. Multiple, multiple times. But if you don't put it into the ecosystem and, and you know, if you're not embarrassed with your first iteration, then you're too late. Yeah. That's tech speak. That's a, that's a tech mantra. <laughs> well, it's true, but I even, you know, I thought about, um, Netflix when they tried to launch their, I don't watch the love is blind, but I know that the internet loves it. And so when they tried to do their, their live reunion and Netflix couldn't, I don't know if there was, I don't know what happened, but like it was a bust basically when they tried to go live, it wouldn't work. I mean, if it can happen to Netflix, it can <laughs> That's what I mean. It gives you permission. I'm like, this is not the first time you've done a- like, you know, things like, you know, live on air. You have, you know, pretty much unlimited budget, but for some reason something didn't work, they couldn't figure it out, and it resulted in a very interesting kind of reunion session. Um and I think um yeah, they were, they were like, tensions were high. You're like just sitting in the room for hours. The audience is sitting there. Like, I'm sure no one's clearing the energy. It's just like building and building and building. And it just, it's like people on the brink of like exploding. Yeah. 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 But that's, that's how I felt of like, give yourself permission for it not to be perfect and like give yourself permission that it's like it does what I've really learned is like, Oh, it doesn't take away from my value or what the value of the thing is that I'm offering because it's not perfect. And this is very important for people to realize it as, as they create their businesses. I'm sure there are a lot of aspiring, um, entrepreneurs who listen to your show, um, who consume your content and those who are just like beginning or, you know, wherever they are, like along the journey and something I've really had to reconcile and understand for myself, like you are enough where you are just like, we all have good intentions. Well, most of us, yeah. I would say in, in my, in my mind, I'm like, we all have good intentions. Uh, and I think that if you have the awareness to think that you're not enough or you're not ready, you're ready. Right. We have to do the things we are afraid of. And for a while, and I feel like we spoke about this, I was afraid to kind of, you know, take on the role of an astrologer because I I don't feel like I'm good enough. Mm. There's a lot of things I don't know. I don't have the ability to kind of, I haven't had the chance to really just study it straight, like nonstop, you know, like doing nothing else for like months and months at a time. I've had other things come in and out. And then I realized, you know, I, I remember reading that I got years ago and it was someone who had like 20 years of astrology experience, but nothing she said really resonated with me. And it always comes back to, you know, your lived experiences, how you share things, how you see the world. Like you are 
unique. You are special. And so people will be drawn to you in that way. Like you have a unique perspective and it doesn't require you to have 10, 15 years of experience. It just requires you to be comfortable with who you are. Yeah. Well, and I think that's so much of like this career alignment Where whenever you're doing something that's truly in alignment for you, when you're following the thing that your intuition, that every part of your body is like, this is the thing for you, you can't fuck it up. Like, I think that's the other thing I've had to accept of like, oh, when I'm in pursuit of doing the things that I know I'm supposed to be doing, the universe will take care of those other details that I didn't have time to finish or the things that aren't perfect. Like I'm going to trust if the universe is like, cool, this is like, and I feel like you and I are both very high functioning and, and probably relatively type A where it's like even yeah. our not great is probably significantly better than like <laughs> than most, you know, like I've had to let that go too. of like your ideas communicated. We understand who you are. The graphics are fine. Let's put it out there. You know, like yes. you don't have to over explain everything to everybody. Like we're going to trust that what it is going out there is going to be received. And so that's yeah. been a lot of the receiving journey that you were talking about earlier. And it's like the amount of, you know, when you talk about your nervous system and mm. it's like, how am I going to balance all of these things? you know, last year we moved, I completely shifted my business. I was pregnant. I had a toddler and I renovated our entire house while we were living in it. And everyone was like, that's insane. Don't it is insane. It is. And they're like, don't you feel crazy? And I kept saying, I was like, I'm learning to deepen my capacity for stress because I knew that I'm like, if I want to, you know, like continue to put out as much content and stuff as I am. And I want to go on tour and I want to speak and I want to amplify other people's work that's within this field and what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people are going to need me and a lot of people are going to need me in a day. And there's executive decisions that are going to have to be made. And then I also want to make sure that I'm a present mother and wife. So this is not going to get easier. It's just going to ramp up. So I saw it as I have 12 Mm -hmm. months. This is an opportunity to teach myself and to teach my nervous system and figure out those kinks. How are we going to learn how to do this? What's too much? What's Mm. not? And the key to a lot of that is it doesn't have to be perfect. That's a, that's a really great perspective to have that you were training. And I guess I am training right now because within the last week or two, I was like, it's not what I do. It's how I do it. And and I'm like, there's going to be a lot of stuff. Like I have so many things to do for my own business, um, for my freelance job. Like it's, it's kind of nuts. And then I, I realized I'm like, it's, it's, you know, when, when the business gets bigger and bigger, you're going to be busier and busier. So it's about how can you relax yourself in the moment? How can you be present? Because, you know, the anxiety, the anxiety that I experience now is like, is it's not like, oh, is what I'm doing going to result in money? Hmm. It's like, do I have enough time and are the results going to be the results that I want? It's a very different feeling, both, you know, stressful, causing anxiety, but in different ways. And then I realized I'm just like, this is just who I am. And I need to just start shedding some of these things and, and, and communicating more to myself and to others and to not hold myself to standards that nobody else is holding me to. Yep. And I, I have found the more that the more that I would like to take on or participate in or create, the actual key to it is doing less. Like the need for it to be perfect, the need to over explain, all of that comes from core negative beliefs. None of that is intuition based. None of that has ever been helped. That's not to say that like we can't like we obviously still need to like show up to the best of our ability and communicate and all those things. But <laughs> yeah. what I've really learned is like, oh, less, 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 less. And because then that gives me more. I have more for myself to be able to show up. I have more to be able to show up with, you know, with my boys. And it's like, I actually have more energy and can do more and can do more, um, sufficiently. I mean, I'm, I'm sure in this learning process, I'm and as I have, I mean, like I said, the last couple of days where I was like, whoa, this is our limit. 
I'm not making any sense. I am exhausted. Things are just going to have to wait. But that's yeah, also never going to go away either. Yeah. And it's just about managing things, about focusing on like what's important and trusting that the people that are working around you, working with you are are going to cap uh, catch the gaps, the biggest ones, the most important ones. And if you don't, well, that's a lesson to be learned as well as it is what it is. And I was looking at your chart. Would you like some tidbits? I would love some tidbits. When you were like, send me your information. I'm going to run your chart. I was like, oh my gosh, yes, please. So the last two and a half years have been very interesting. Two and a half, three years Mm -hmm. have been feeling very, very intense. Mm -hmm. Very, very intense because there have been some major transits that really force you to rework your identity. Mm -hmm. Rework how you process your emotions to actually be more emotionally literate and communicate your boundaries, communicate your needs, and as well as shift and change how you see the world around you and your place in the world. And the last two months, you have felt deeply called to speak speak out more Mm -hmm. in a different way, maybe relating to, yeah, perfectionism, relating to like, uh, like wellness, which goes into like, you know, holistic wellness and really feeling a strong drive to share your opinion. And it's happened kind of like twice, like big, like with each new moon in Aries, you felt it again and again and feeling more confident and sharing your POV on what does it mean to lead and to be a visionary uh, and how to communicate these things around structure, around systems, um, and around finding balance. So these are all words that you've used like during our conversation right now. And specifically for you, these next few years are going to be extremely activating for your career and for your alignment to your purpose. Like all the things that you've been working through, working toward are going to kind of like move even faster. And one of the most important things for you to remember is that you have a very specific vision that may not make sense to others, but it doesn't matter to really trust yourself and know that you will be doing more identity work. You will be kind of solidifying this new version of yourself that's been emerging for quite some time and just feeling more confident in starting the projects, going after the things that you truly want. And at the same time, releasing codependent habits, patterns, people, situations, and really recognizing the relationships that really help lift you up. And the ones that are feeling a bit sluggish and and to be even more discerning, ones that feel okay, just okay, not like great. And we want to move you th- more toward great, from good to great. Yeah. Yeah, I love all that. I mean, a huge word for me in this season has been bold. Yes. Yeah. It's really, you have um, some important Aries placements in your chart. And so really leaning into, yeah, one of the key words for Aries is bold. Yeah. Yeah. Of just the, um, yeah, especially, you know, where it is, what, what is that where it's always like, don't ask other people that haven't been where you're going for advice or something like that. Right. Um, or where it's just like other people didn't get like they weren't in the meeting of when you got the download of what it is that you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think so much of that, of like everything we've been talking about of like doing less, trusting your intuition, judging less, being like, uh, not even just with judging, but like, uh, corrections, micromanaging, like any of those things where it's like, I think even it's just like less, 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 less. Cause it, it is where it's like, I can already feel, like I said, the universe is like, we're prepping you for the thing that you asked for. So you no, better no, no, be it doing. Is. Yeah, it is. It is. And you can also view it as like, how are you be, how are, how are you operating, thinking, um, feeling in, in unhealthy ways, like even relationship with yourself and with the universe. You know, how are you codependent and how are you just not allowing things to flow to you? Yep. Yeah. 
people and really seeing seeing more uh opportunity that's been a big one where it was like oh how can we like kind of open up like take those like blinders off yeah there's Mm. been a lot of expansion and there's been a lot of like it's also that thing where I'm like you have to take bold action because if it was watered down then it's like it, it, it would basically be being like, oh, I'm going to make this amazing soup. I'm going to, oh, the soup is going to be so good. And then you ha- you're like, would you like to try the soup? And then they're like, oh, it tastes a little watered down. It's like, well, I didn't want to give you all the soup at once. So like I, you know, or it's like, well, then how the fuck is anybody going to know if they like your soup? Like you just put it all in there. Make the soup. Show up. This is my soup. Like, would you like some? Like, I just think for me, it's like, you know what it's like to live at 50%, but you don't know yes. what it's like yet to live at a hundred percent. So live yeah. at a hundred percent and find out, you know, like my other, um, tagline for this season has been like, fuck around and find out where I'm like, why not? Why not <laughs> tell people exactly what it is that you want to do and see what happens, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, see what happens because you know, it's, it's also one of the things about, this new transit that we're all going to be going through these next few years is recognizing how we've been operating small. How are we making ourselves small and how do you live a bigger, fuller life? And that starts with how you view yourself, how you see yourself and your abilities. And it will require us this year to really go inward even more. Now, I know that this is like the year that we kind of feel like we're out of the pandemic, but ironically so, as we do more, we feel more pulled to go inward and spending more time at home with a very small number of people, like literally under five, under 10. And I think that's a very difficult thing for all of us to reconcile like, oh, I was really excited to like travel, to see people, to throw parties. And yes, that still holds to a certain extent, but so many of us are starting to feel bur- burned out and and needing more rest and and realizing that, oh, like I haven't been prioritizing myself maybe for my entire life, my entire career. And now is a time for me to really shift gears and change is, is difficult at times. It's difficult a lot of the times to change your operating system, to change your modus operandi. Yeah. And 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 this is all what we're experiencing. And and to understand how you can live fuller and bolder, you gotta get to know yourself. And that requires you to go inward even more. Yeah. And not like I um I'd posted a quote on my Instagram recently and it was like, we won't wake up until the pain that we've caused ourselves is worse than the pain that we've been avoiding. And it's Mm. the same thing of like our dreams or aspirations, like when it comes to like career, where it's like, you're not going to wake up and choose to do something different or even to pivot or to go full, to live fully or to, you know, whatever that is until holding yourself back is worse than the potential fear of what's going to happen if I, you know, and, and I think I've also just used my own experience as the lighthouse of being like, Mm -hmm. if you're scared that if you leave this life behind and you do something different, that it's not going to work out. I'm, I may only be one example, but let me be the one Mm -hmm. example that like, that's not what's true. The truth is if you know, you're supposed to do something different, you know, you're supposed to expand, you know, you're supposed to try this thing, whatever it is. Like, I guarantee you, you're right. (laughs) If you don't do it, it will eat you from the inside out. You will exactly. become ill. And then, <laughs> especially if you're going through a sad return, you're in your late 20s or mid to late 50s, like you will get a kick from the universe. Like we all have. And in my podcast, the last season, season two, it was all about what happened to people to really push them into their sad return and to cool. like wake up and hear the message. And, you know, a lot of things happen. Sometimes people get into accidents. You know, some people just have a really big aha moment. Sometimes they suffer through illness. And I'm not saying like everyone will experience this, but it's just like we've been ignoring the signals. And if you're ignoring the signals, your body and the universe will be like, hey, you have to, you have to listen up. It is time. It is time. And so, you know, for those listening to this episode, may it be a reminder of like, don't wait. Don't don't wait for like the last message or like one of those last few messages. Like listen early on. Listen to the whispers before they become like, you know, the the megaphone, like big speaker yells. Well, and I love what you're saying. This kind of takes us back to the beginning as we wrap up here of like 
you know, when you're like, I knew that I was supposed to create this thing and I was like, oh my gosh, but I also like, I have my other work and now I'm going to make this huge thing. And so that's what I always tell people too. I'm like, make the easy choice. The easy choice is actually to go, okay, I'm going to try this thing. I'm like, mm-hmm. now I understand that it's not easy because we're scared and it's tied to all of these other things. I don't mean to make light of the feeling. The feelings are difficult, but the choice is easy. So we don't have to overthink that. Like, at least if you make that choice, you say yes. It doesn't mean that you have to do all of the work that day. But at least to your point, it's like, don't wait until, you know, the metaphorical house is on fire to be like, oh, yeah, okay, I guess I'll pay attention because that's what I did. (laughs) And like, it's just way harder. That's happened to me a couple of times, too. And so I think looking back, I there's so many of us think when we're starting a new project, a new path in life, that it has to be this fully formed thing before we start, or it has to look a very specific way. Remember that rigidity, that controlling-ness. And I remember I wanted to make an app and then all my friends who like build apps and websites like, don't do it, don't do it. And so then I thought to myself, like, what's going to be something like easier and more manageable to create, but will still provide the same value. And that was a website. And then after I built it, I was like, I think I could have made something even easier, like a plugin or, Mm. um, or just started like sharing what I wanted to share, but in a, in a, through an Excel document and like had a, like somehow figured out, like hired someone on Upwork to create like all the formulas and stuff. Cause Excel can do some pretty crazy things or like an air table. And I realize that now I'm like, Oh, it could be easier. So continually ask yourself, how can this be easier? How can I do this in an easier way? Reducing the friction of not starting because it's taking too much time. You don't know what it's going to look like. It's going to cost too much. And I was just like, okay, I need to start this. And I did. And I figured it out along the way. And as someone who's not a technologist, I really surprised myself. I built a pretty, pretty cool thing and I'm really, really proud of it. Good. Good. I love that so much. I really do. And I, I love hearing that again, where it's like, how could this be easier? Because like I said, where it's like, and I think I've learned that because I put so much pressure sometimes of like, even like a video or something that goes out on my, and like, here's the other thing, friends, if you're thinking about creating content or anything within that world, it's like, you never know what people are going to respond to. Sometimes it feels like comedy where like, I've written a joke. I'm like, dude, this joke is going to crush. I tell it a couple times and people are like, yeah, it's funny. I'm like, you guys, that's hilarious. And then something else that I just improvise and people lose it. I'm like, that's the thing that people think. So, you know, even with our most, even really creating from a place of true intuition, we don't ever fully know. So that's where it's like doing, starting easy or what is the easy thing? What is the, you know, so that to your point, you eliminate that friction and you can just get it out. It's like, you're going to learn. It's going to ever evolve. I'm getting ready to do um, a a live show a series that I've been wanting to do. I got this download, I don't know, three oh, years wow. we ago. We talked about it. Yes. And so I, um, and I was like, oh, I should, you know, again, I was going to make it this way harder thing. And I was like, nope, we're going to find a venue. We're going to make a poster and we're just going to do one. And then we're going to do another one. And then we're going to do another one. And we're going to allow it to evolve. Because even if I come out and I'm like, audience, I want you to know this is the thing that my guides told me to do. And this is the show that's going to change everything. They'd be like, what? Like, you know what I mean? It's like, we don't have to give everybody everything. Just start, start easy, start small, just. Less pressure. Yes. Yes. Because have fun, have fun, you know, even for the moments that aren't fun, like, you know, every day for me is not fun. It's a lot of deepening my capacity to be a great co-parent and co like lover and co, you know, collaborator with my husband. And we're passing kids back and forth and trying to balance who's going to take this meeting. And, you know, it's a lot, but sometimes I'm like, when everybody's freaking out, the boys are crying and we're trying to get everything together. I'm like, we're going to turn some music on and we're just going to dance. Well, everybody's crying and we're just going to dance. We're going to make some food. We're going to figure it out because like, it's not that serious. It's really not that serious. Um, 
Okay, so I I don't want to take you've got, you're a busy lady. You got to hop. You've got so much to do today. It has just started. So uh, tell us again about where we can find you, your podcast, the website, uh, all these things, and if there's any other tidbits that you want to leave us about this specific eclipse cycle. Oh yeah, of course. So people can find me on Instagram at w o o w o o c o. If you want your free career astrology report, you go to yoursaturn.com. And yeah, I would love to know what you thought of what we shared and oh, my podcast is called Into the Woo. W o o into the woo. And with this eclipse season, we're going to feel it for the next few weeks. And really this full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio is a wonderful kind of like culminating all the things we've learned the last few years about what we need to release in terms of feeling powerful, receiving help. Um, I think that a lot of people who receive help from family or friends, financial or other resources are reconfiguring, you know, how to receive and whether it's something that you're like okay i've i've had enough of this this is something i've been dealing for a long time i'm ready to step out on my own or i've never been able to receive and i'm receive and i'm learning how to receive help from others and of course it's all the money mindset stuff it's doing the healing work it's it's really going into the subconscious and places spaces that we're kind of ignoring what we've been in denial about ourselves and others. And really expanding our emotional capacity, our emotional literacy. Some people listening to this episode, they might be dealing with uh, some of the stuff that happened as they grew up around religion and releasing some of that like dog dogma, that rigidity and and, and parts of their identity that no longer relate to this programming that was given to them earlier in life and opening themselves up to what spirituality means to them, connection to self, connection to universe. And it's just such a beautiful opportunity to release, release the things that don't serve you, but really celebrate how far you've come in the healing process, in feeling more financially stable, in feeling more powerful and really understanding how to process your emotions, understanding that emotions are a very powerful tool to tap into your intuition and to understand yourself, and really just having a bigger capacity to feel and to allow yourself to feel. I just had to leave a moment on the tail end of that. That's so good. It's so good. Alice, I am so grateful that you reached out and you're like, hey, how do you feel about doing like an eclipse episode? And I'm like, I love it. So I am so grateful. This was like such a great and just fun way to connect and hear about kind of what and the peripheral things have been like for you. So I'm so grateful and I am so excited for everybody that's listening to be able to hear all of your wisdom and experience. So thank you so much for sharing all of that with us because it's just so major. So thank you. Uh, And I'll put all of your information in the show notes so we know where to find you and all of that good stuff. Friends, always remember to, if things feel so overwhelming, get outside, get for a walk and drink some water. You would be just like shocked. Sometimes I'm like, I need to get outside and drink some water and sometimes just a hot or cold shower. Dealer's choice on that one. But you know, just, yeah, jumping in, getting clean and like, (sighs) no sudden moves. There's a lot going on. Uh, so no sudden moves. It's all going to be great. Uh, I've already got my phone is blowing up right away. Uh, and back, back to the wild, wild west of our lives. Uh, friends again, thank you so much for listening. This is the Rachel LaForce show. I am Rachel LaForce and, uh, we'll see you next week. Time, weather, and-